let's see what this is real quick. Oh, something boring, I guess. But, we're going to be playing some... No Harvard, but I was a scholar, hard and knocks, and I learned to be smarter, don't prefer to be bothered, you get if I order, that's word to my father, I will for my mother, deal with my brothers, keep it real, real, don't talk with no, plus I duck under cover, gotta stay on this mission. Got a vision that's endless. They told me don't be a menace. They gon' serve no, me a sentence. But now I'm up in the Guinness. The hill is hill is that did it. Get the cream look. Drop it. Then it. Give a lot of opinions. I'm just minding my business. If I'm grinding, I'm shining. Don't got time for the gimmicks. I'm it. Squad. 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 I'm it. Okay, now we back to square one. It's hard to square up. Everybody got cops come, mama cries, dead sons, Lord, please bless them. Back to the party, I'm just pouring my don't give, don't give, don't give, don't give, don't give face that before, so I live it up. When the police come, better get them off. That's a flaw strap, better get them off. I'm a TV and it's a dinner rush. I'll let you, I'll let you finish up. Block of diamonds, I can promise I'm being honest. This super, this super, this being modest. I am your highness, I am not, I am, not, I am the finest. You rappers, rappers, plus you a liar. Don't idolize and I don't admire. Been doing me for like ever. I'm a better me, more clever, clever. It's a new way. We surfing, baby, new. been on my video hello everybody I'm Larry Ridley welcome to Matt 18 on EA Sports here we've got a couple of big targets who will try to be key contributors in both the pass and run games today it's the Browns going up against the Jaguars <laughs> for the call let's see you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, we welcome our viewers to Duval County, the northern part of Florida, and the largest city in the Sunshine State as EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to Everbank Field here in Jacksonville. A few minutes prior to us coming on air, this crowd was jolted into action with the introduction to these Jaguars. They're set for football as the Jags are ready to match up with the Cleveland Browns. Why did my juke go? Hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, we saw Larry focus on the tight end matchup in his open. You think it's one to watch, don't you? Definitely one to watch because these guys can create such big plays by all the different things they can do. Line up out wide in the slot. 
line up in a normal tight end position, and then who are you going to cover them with? Is it a linebacker, a defensive back? They create mismatches all throughout the game. A good pick up there, eight yards of the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones switch. running around the NFL nowadays. Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. Well, it certainly appears that in this game, someone has decided they're going to open up their playbook. First quarter, and we see that play. I like their style. They go play action here on first down. He's going to walk this one deep left sideline. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Shotgun now for Bortles. He'll check this one off to Fournette. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville at a first down. On the ground, this is Leonard Fournette. And very little daylight there. They'll get a couple up to the 44. Chris Ivory with his first carry. No, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. And he's brought down. That good for 19 at a first down. That's a prime example of how tough Chris Ivory can be to bring down. He's so good that I think that he would last very well in a boxing gym. You know, because he's going to wear you down with those types of runs all game long. If they can't start getting him on the ground quicker and more efficiently, They've got a long game in front of them. Shoves him aside. Even with him busting through the contact, he'll still be stopped just inside the 35. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Fake to Fournette, now it's Bortles to throw. Rolling to his right, and he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. Now Bortles on the bootleg. And incomplete oh my here God. on third down. I do do. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. He came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. They'll go with a big bank for that. What? Why did you stop? You give down. up? And this defense no. delivers a turnover on Dad. Yeah, I'm just going to give up halfway. Tell me, what? He goes, nah, I'm just going to give up. He goes, Dude, he could have easily chopped through that kid, bro. A major momentum swing here early. Because the defense stopped them. You know what they're going to do? They go for it on the first drive of the game. They're the ones trying to establish something, trying to assert a little dominance. And guess what? You turn it back on them and give the ball to your own offense. I agree with you. It can change that momentum that in a big way. Quarterback sucks. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep now that they're going to run. They want to try that again. Go play action. Hit them over I mean, the top. Now they're going to throw. It's a loss of two. Now third down. 
Wow, that play got shut down in a hurry. As soon as the snap came, you can see defensively they were just closing in. That was going nowhere. Yeah, you count on your offensive line to give you a little bit of space, a little bit of time so you can make a move. There was nothing there for them. They lost two now and it brings up four. Don't forget about finding a lane there. He Ooh, barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. You don't even take the Cole chance. Quinn on the kick as he sends it away. This will be fielded at the 17. Why did I A big stop? hit that time, 52 yards. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Goodness. I want to give a hat tip real quick, Charles, to J.J. Watt before the possession switches here. Walter Payton, NFL Man of the Year, and they totaled up how much he helped raise for Hurricane Relief, $37 million. Incredible. Hurricane Harvey, which really hit the Houston area in a big way. And his I swear he didn't catch that. So <laughs> congratulations to J.J. Watt and all the people who participated. And Greg Olson of the Panthers, Benjamin Watson of the Ravens, both tight ends, also nominated and finalists for the most prestigious award as determined by the NFL, the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. Portals again here on second and ten. There's somebody on this field. Off. It brings up third. You're the most retardiest person. Well, we're not playing three yards in a cloud of dust football anymore. I kind of get why those old school coaches sometimes didn't want to throw the football. Because if it's popped up in the air, it almost turns into slow motion. And both sides trying to get to the football, and you're holding your breath wondering whether it's going to go good or bad for your team. Lee's got it over the middle. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. But we're used to seeing the guy that you consider the number one receiver double covered. But how about this guy? He's double covered and finds a way to make the play for a first down. That's how you increase your Madden rating, right? No doubt about that at all. And you know something? I think we'll hear about that from him soon. He'll get a couple yards on that one. And that'll make this a second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver. And you're running down. Alongside the former defensive back, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Jaguar football as we begin quarter number two. They've got a second down and eight to start things out. Now Bortles again. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he'll Dude, go down he auto shoots. The 41. Why would you auto shoot? I go, and then he auto shoots. Everyone's going to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, mm. but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. On first and ten, here's Bortles. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. What is it? A good move on the count, but still brought down just inside Stop the four. Stop auto-choking! three on the play. And that'll make it a second down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Three, 90. Three, 90. Play action. Now it's Bortles. Muscles by at the 25. They'll tussle for it, and this is going to be caught. First down, Jacksonville. The passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it. Now the confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football. But you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Oh, and my he's gonna goodness. Lose yards. They take him down at the 26. Oh it's a loss of five there, oh. bringing up second. Now Bortles thinking twice about their offensive setup. He's going to take a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. So the defense has put them in a tough spot. It's second and long. From the gun, it's Bortles. He's going to take a shot for the end. That's Hearns. He's got it. 
Touchdown, Jaguars. Allen Hearns, 26 yards. And the Jags are able to catch in for six. And that was really just a great battle for that football on both sides. The result is a touchdown. Ordinarily, I'd like to say it was a win-win, but it really wasn't because the defender, while he was there with excellent coverage, he didn't get the benefit, did he? But he's not going to get chewed up in film session. No, he? he was right there. They'll tell him, okay, of course you need to knock the ball away, but they won't be too upset with him. He did his job for the most part. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Brown's offensively getting ready to take the field again. If you take a step back, Charles, last two years for the Browns, 1-31, worst two-year stretch in the 98-year history of the NFL. Everybody knows that story. And the playoff drought at 14 years. Where does this franchise turn? Everybody it's one of the great that. questions because Everybody I was on the record last spring that their draft looked about as professional a draft as you could have. Three first-rounders. All of them became starters for them. When you think oh, about it, Miles Garrett at defensive end, okay. Jabril Peppers at, at, at uh, defensive back, and David Njoku at tight end. All of them contributed. It looked like they were making progress. They've just simply forgotten how to win as an organization, a franchise, as a team. That's the number one thing. Get a win. Get two wins, and maybe they can start to turn this thing around. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. Kaiser now. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. With a sling in it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. That's taken on the 25. CD, I want to give you your thoughts on some potential free up. agents this offseason before we change the possession here. Now, caution, many of these guys could be resigned, I know, but who are some of them? Kirk Cousins is one. Yeah, we're talking about difference makers. Kirk Cousins at the quarterback position. He's going to be coveted in a <laughs> quarterback needy teams. Case Keenum had a big year. Could he move? But how about running backs? Why? Deion Lewis, some pass catchers. Jimmy Graham, Jarvis Landry, Sammy Watkins. And about the guy who goes and gets quarterbacks, DeMarcus Lawrence had a monster year for Dallas last season. Yeah, a lot of big names that could be out there as free agents. <laughs> out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And Ooh. this one goes nowhere. Another Losing year. yardage on the play back at the 46. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. Losing because the scheme is retarded? Yes. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Larry Ridley in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Now Bortles dumps it like to the When I and need to juke, it doesn't juke, but when I don't Four need to, it on the pickup, juke. And that's going to lead to a third down. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Portals. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Now they try to swing it out left into the flat. Complete, but really nice open field tackling. And they played that one like a great boxer. They were on their toes on that one. They weren't back on their... And how about this? A fake. And this is incomplete, a huge gamble, and it does not pay off. They fake the punt, it doesn't work out, 
It's such a risky play there I'm to fake it. it. You're either the hero or the goat. Here they're going to be the goat. Unfortunate, too, because you know they thought they had something there. They don't call it just a call. They don't just say, oh, what the heck, let's go ahead and fake it here. They feel like they've got something on. They've got the defense in the right spot. Just unsuccessful in that opportunity. And he's brought down. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So here we go, first and ten now. Working out of the gun. Here's Kaiser. Firing quickly what? here, and that's complete. And he'll go down Please. at the 28. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. As the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Second down now after the pass completion. Here we go. From the gun, Kaiser. It's caught by Crowell. Oh no gain on the play, and it'll bring up a third down. But he caught it right at the line of scrimmage, and before he could even think about advancing it forward, he got hit. Great tackling, because that's what you're taught. Don't give up yards after the catch, and most offenses make a living off of yards after catch. Those hidden yards that may not go into the score sheet, but they count big for moving the ball and stretching the field. Really nice open field tackle. That'll move the sticks for the Browns, a gain of 12. From the red zone now, Kaiser. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. One thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. And now the Jags going to signal for another timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Again is Kaiser on second and ten. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And this play gets blown up. They'll lose yardage. Back at the 17. On third down, Kaiser. And that is incomplete. Stopping the clock with five seconds to go. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, there's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. And the kick by Gonzalez is good. And they are on the board, trailing now 6-3. to three. So they're still down, but they are able to salvage three here heading into the lockers. This is what you work on from the beginning of training camp. Heading into the half, put some points on the board. No matter what the score says at that point, you've accomplished what you set out to do. Here's Corey Grant now to return. So we come upon halftime. 6-3 is our... And we seemingly lost communication with Larry. Good news, though. Both teams somehow already back on the field and ready for the third quarter. That's so annoying. This is fielded at the goal line. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set to start off this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half. <laughs> and wanting to move them. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because oh, there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. On second down, here's Crowell. And Crowell lost the football. Dude, he's really 
Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along. Like, uh, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. And they can't get the long connection as it falls incomplete. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. And he fields it cleanly. A beautiful fake. And now running right through. Auto That'll be put again. in the books as a 53-yard mm. punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, they'll, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we got, the yeah. we, got the we, got the, we got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see if the offense gets done. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Tommy yeah. Bohan on the fullback is intended target. And it's third and short. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. Portal's going to try and throw on third down. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. No gain at all. They tried to swing it out left into the flat, but the defense, they were very principled there. It felt very West Coast offense, didn't it? You know, you know their expression, right? On a West Coast offense, when they throw the ball, it's either going to be a touchdown or a check down, meaning they like to press it downfield. If they don't have it, swing it out, which is exactly what we saw there. But how about the great pursuit and tackle to make a nice play? And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A big play on the ground there. It goes for 36 yards. But there's a reason he was the first running back taken. You saw the ability there, the ability to be physical and get downhill. And how about him breaking off a nice game there? There's some Adrian Peterson comparisons out there now. That's high praise. Do you think that they're warranted? Running style, very similar. Fournette fighting through. Oh, it breaks another. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 See, like, yards. No I love that the scout told me that with his running style, this guy's always the hammer, never. See, I go, bah, and then I keep on pressing triangle, got it. And then, wait, was that a little bit of a taunt? From the back, it was like a taunt. It was a taunt. Would you count that as a taunt? That's probably why I lost because I was for the nail, but also has the ability to break it off big too. I was on the field for a game he had last year at LSU, and there were some college boys warming up, <laughs> and then Leonard Fournette walked in. He is a man. Full grown. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now a play fake here on first down. You get that some crazy touchdowns. Marquis Lee. A two yard touchdown grab. And the Jaguars add on to their lead. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter. Capital. 
Josh Lambeau now for the point after. And oh, he takes off with it. It's a fake. And complete to Lewis over the middle. And he is not going to get in there. The he stops short of the goal line. And the lead is oh going to stay right God. where it is. Oh, my God. I would try to my a little bit. I liked it when they would fake it from the three-yard line, right? When you'd line up, go ahead, and, oh, there's a fake, and now he's going to get two. That's great. But from the 15, the risk-reward is just not there. So risky to get 15 yards on a fake. Oh, you see the result? Right there. Yeah, I know these young whippersnappers are trying to do different things in this game, but let's go back to old reliable. Kick the ball oh, through the post. Get off my lawn. That's darn right. Let's go! On play action, Kaiser. Kaiser hit, and he lost the football. And that will set him up in excellent shape. First and goal at the nine-yard line. What part did they win? Empty set there. No backs in the backfield. All receivers out in the pattern. And in this situation, you know what the quarterback has to do? Act as his own blitz control. Yeah, he's got nobody else there to protect. No him. one else there to protect, which means he's got to get rid of the football and absorb the hit, but not go down and fumble the ball. Got his man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Mercedes Lewis, a nine yard touchdown grab. And the Jags take advantage of field position on the turnover to cash this one in. But what a quick turnaround there. They get the football. Next play, boom, touchdown. I've been in a situation before where a turnover occurs, and if you're over on the bench with your defensive mate, and you talk about what to do on your next series, and all of a sudden you hear sudden change, you've got to get out on the field and defend right away. Not everyone is mentally prepared to go. Is that what is yelled on the sidelines a lot of times? That, among other things. <laughs> Maybe some words we can't share here. Yeah, we'll, we'll just keep this one PG. FCC violation. No doubt. On the return, Jabril Peppers. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Here comes the Browns offense back onto the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this Let's one. Go. Big word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> no gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. Give him nine yards on the second down screen play. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. They'll try to run for it with Crowell. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. But these guys got to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage to be found. And the punt team on now as this one sent away. This is taken at the 15. Gets around him. Nearly a huge return, as it is still a very good one. 24 yards, and possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set to go again. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, the fact you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feeling. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? On play action, it's Bortles. And that one knocked away and incomplete. Nice job defensively on what will be the final play. 
Ten yards still left on second down. on the play back at the 46. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Brandon, this is clearly a running situation when you're up in the fourth quarter. They're going to have to stack the box and make it difficult for them to move the ball. Made it very difficult right there. Now they need to repeat that effort. Yeah, bring seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take to slow them down. They'll try the end around with Robinson. Shifts by him, and he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. He's able to chew up eight yards on the carry there, but still fourth down upcoming. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. Penny, oh it would have been a long field goal, but fake doesn't work out. Walking. That was a long attempt to begin like with. That's so the, the only place you need to go. Everybody's going to the defense. They side. were fooled. You're right, they weren't fooled. Cool. And they were in a position of having to play it both ways. Guard for the fake, but you still want to rush the kicker yeah, because it was a makeable kick. So they ended up getting the best out of the whole thing. Yeah. Stuffed the fake, and they take over the ball. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Second down, Kaiser again. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And he loses the football a second time. But this will fortunately wind up out of bounds. I don't know about you, but I can hear and feel the sigh of relief all the way up here in our booth. That was palpable. The sideline, the friend there. No doubt about it. Ball goes over the sideline, able to retain possession. No turnover. <laughs> I know his coaches are screaming, just hang on to the ball, man. First down, Kaiser. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. They'll give him a yard on the play, and it'll make it a second down. If you're still in here, could you please type? Kaiser now on second down. He's got a man. It's Corey Coleman. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. A first down throw for Kaiser. To the right side and complete to Njoku. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. Not too many teams will use a first-round pick on a tight end, so you know that when one does, he's got to be pretty darn special. A small example of why they took him in the first round there. Nice little catch and run to get the good yardage. Josh Gordon, the intended receiver. And now the Jags going to signal for another timeout. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. Second down following the incompletion. Really wow. Really, really nice. Now a handoff to Crown. And not much to speak of there. Out. there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. Tough day. Tough sledding right there. And it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. Kaiser from the gun on third. And this is going to be incomplete. You know, every time we talk with people about the most important quality for a quarterback to have in the NFL, what do they usually cite? Arm strength. Yeah, and that's really way down on the list. Accuracy is one of the bigger ones, maybe the foremost one. That's what he needed on that play. Fourth down, Kaiser, desperation time. And this is going to be incomplete. 
The Browns unable to move the chains on fourth down. And the Jaguars are going to yeah. take possession here on the turnover on downs. And they've now made two trips to the red zone and still looking for their first touchdown. Not able to punch it in. And if you're on defense, your confidence is sky high. Because mentally, you're saying, hey, hey you're in the red zone. We're thinking we're giving up three. We just want to give up six. In this case, they end up not giving up the touchdown at all. They've got to feel great about what they got done. And now past another. No it's way. a foot race. The 20, 10 for touchdown, Jaguars. A big play there. An 80-yard touchdown. And the Jaguars add six to their lead. And that run massively increased his production in this game, and now he's over 100 yards. And break out your calculator, partner, because his yards per carry went up it's significantly, right? Big-time jaunt all the way to the end zone. Oh, it's a fake. They'll try and throw for it. They've got this big lead. They said, forget one, we want two. Instead, they got zero. Unbelievable that he didn't even attempt it from the 15-yard line. What are they thinking? I do know this. When you fake one in this situation with that type of a lead, especially from the 15-yard line, oh, boy. I, I tell you what, meeting them again somewhere down the line, they'll remember this. Yeah, they'll think that they... He goes, he goes to tackle someone like, don't mind my bad kick because... Look at 50, he goes, nope. nope. It's him. Oh. Him. He, uh, let's see where he is. He goes, oh my goodness. He goes, mm. and then, <laughs> what, what, who do you try to tackle? The air? <laughs> They were trying to cloud him a little bit. And the Browns getting set to go. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no go. points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? And that is intercepted on the sideline. Wait, no. They'll say no. It was caught out of bounds. So this is just an incompletion. What? Where out of bounds? My toes are on the ground. What out of bounds? Rep, are you mental? Challenge that. And I can't challenge. And on second and ten now. From the shotgun, it's Kaiser. Got his man complete yeah, over the um, middle. That's Gordon. I'm, I'm and this will go to the 28-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. Moving. It's third down. The Browns on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This is third and seven. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Now Kaiser. And that is incomplete. An open man that time, but end up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Here's Britton Colquitt now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And we'll see what he can do on the return. Why? Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. <laughs> Getting set to go again, Blake Bortles marches back onto the field with his offense. He has really been buoyed here by a strong running attack. They've been great on the ground. And have enjoyed the entire process because 
oftentimes when you're running the football we go, well, that's three, much more of a team line. effort. Three, Everyone has nine. to come together to make it work. Offensive line, wide receivers, the tight ends when they're on the field, maybe an extra running back leading. It is a really nice thing to see, a team type of thing. And guess what? The quarterback, he got out of locker room a whole lot faster after this game. <laughs> the interviews are going to go to the running back. Yeah, now we hit the home stretch here in the fourth with their lead. They'll run it again with Fournette. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. I am in a... I mean... 88's blocking. 88's blocking. I go towards there. 88, you're getting picked off this Do my team. eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. Portal's going to throw here. Oh, and he's taken oh, down. Oh, this will be a wild sack. Christian Kirksey leading the surge there. He drops him for a loss of six. And they brought the pressure there just right up the gut, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. And, you know, when you've got so many different responsibilities as an offensive line, you got to deal with the nose tackle, the two defensive tackles or ends, and then sometimes you just can't account for everyone. The linebacker slipped free. Strong run, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. Only two yards on the pickup there, and now they're looking at a long third down. I once had a defensive player in the NFL tell me, if I beat and dominate the guy across from me, I'm helping my team. But well, winning one-on-one -on -one battles is always a part of the game. But when you have good team defense, as we just saw there, one broken tackle, but he didn't get away because the rest of the guys arrived to put him on the ground. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the forehead. Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams know no Okay, I'm ending the game there because this is gay.